to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. You are going to love today's show. I promise. Laura Michaels is with me today, and we have a very straightforward, very candid, very insightful conversation about talking budgets with your clients. Laura tells it like it is. She is confident in her services, in her process, and she stands her guns in these conversations with her clients. If you are like Laura and already in this place in your career where you are doing this, then you are going to be sending her virtual high fives as you hear her conversation. And if you're not quite there, yet, I do believe that her experience and her expertise in this area is going to inspire you to emulate her the next time you have a budget conversation with a client. Laura Michaels Design is a full service design firm specializing in residential and commercial interiors. She is out of Greenwich, Connecticut. Having started her career as a fashion designer, Laura Michaels is no stranger to developing complete collections filled with layers of textures, patterns, and colors. She is proud of her ability to source the right item at the right price. Her extensive knowledge of the market makes the design process process quick and easy, but never routine. You will hear it today. She is a get it done kind of lady who understands that your work as interior designers is to be valued and it has a price attached to it. A minute here to say thank you to Kravit for sponsoring the show. Kravit is your design partner for fabulous fabrics, furniture, wallpaper, rugs, trims, and accessories. Remember the next time that you're sourcing a project, specify a Kravit fabric, wallpaper, or trim and receive 10% off any one order by using the code code AWDB10 at checkout. AWBD10 at checkout. All right, I'm really looking forward to sharing this conversation with you. Let's meet Laura. Hi, Laura. Thanks so much for joining me on a well designed business today. Hi, Luann. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. So, Laura. Um, I've just learned a little bit about you off air and I want to share that I think today I would like for our conversation for our colleagues to center around a couple of key things. You happen to be a very successful interior design firm and, and interestingly you're not a big firm but yet you're doing you know revenue gross revenues over three million and to be a team of under five and doing that sort of volume is unusual and to be commended. So congratulations on you. Thank you. And also that says to me that you're doing several things right. See, if you have, if someone has a design firm of 10 or 12 or 15 members and they're doing that sort of uh, gross revenues, it, it does not mean that it doesn't mean that they're not good business people, right? I mean, of course they are, but it also means that there are a lot of hands on deck and there are a lot of people getting all of that volume done. But when you are a team of, what are you, three people, did you tell me? Three or four people? Three people. Three yes. people, uh-huh. right, three people. And doing that level of volume, that without even having a conversation with you speaks to efficiency to me. It also speaks to healthy profit margins and it also speaks to me of um, probably really being pretty good at zeroing in on the projects that you should say yes to and the projects that you should let walk away. Absolutely. Ha- okay, so you have uh, you agree with those statements? Absolutely. Okay, okay. So talk to me about developing the skill set 
for let's start with identifying the clients and the projects that are the type that you should engage with and figuring out and understanding the types that you should let keep walking down the lane how what what are your opinions on that and how do you come to look at your trajectory of forming those opinions well i think as a designer i always um, I'm, I'm I'm a very perceptive designer so I'm perceptive in the the style the client is looking for which is very time saving and I'm look and I'm very perceptive to the client themselves I can identify the client that is going to wind up being very difficult and very time consuming um, the client who's indecisive not necessarily and difficult is, is sort of a a vague, a vague statement, but it's the client who is indecisive, the client who cannot make up their minds, um, and that's a that's a really hard position to be in because you're developing the entire design aesthetic of the home, and ultimately you know and you know it's so right, um, and then the client looks at it and they can't really understand what it is that you're trying to put forth. Um, oftentimes that client is looking at other homes of her friends and saying, this is what I want. Um, and yet hasn't, hasn't re really projected that information in a way that made you understand what they were looking for. And that is a very time consuming, uh, client and, and a difficult client, uh, to work with. So usually what happens with that client is that you've presented an entire, um, aesthetic, and find that you've hit a wall and you're starting over. And now you've then, then the client says, okay, well, what I really wanted, <laughs> uh, and then you're starting over from that point. If you're, if, if, if you're getting to that point, you're already a bad match in my opinion. Okay. And so what does it take looking back when you, as you built your firm, does it take simply having that happen to you two, three, four times, whatever it might be, whatever each person's threshold is before you just start to say, I'm, I'm, you know, I see this, hear this, feel this in this initial call or consultation and pass on them. There's usually some very telling signs. Um, oftentimes the client has gone through one or multiple designers that's a red flag right there um and you have to question what 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 were the problems if it's just a you know difference in philosophy um that's 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 easy it happens um you know sometimes it's just the wrong personality but when it's when it when it happens frequently it is an indication that the client is um, indecisive and that there's some issues with either communication or just, you know, the, maybe it's a budgetary issue. Um, I try to get as much information up front as possible. Um, budget for me is one of my first conversations. Um, if someone has not given enough thought to the project and the amount of money that they feel they need to spend, then they're probably a little premature in, in, pro in progressing with the project. If it requires you to price out the entire project for them to have an understanding of budget, once again, that's a, a tremendous waste of time. Um, and it would oftentimes set you in the wrong direction. There has to be an idea for budget either on, it, when a client says, I have no idea, you tell me. And I'll say, well, there's all sorts of budgets. You know, you can buy a couch for, you know, five thousand dollars you can buy a couch for fifteen thousand dollars you can buy a couch for one thousand dollars it it's so varied you need to tell me so that's um that's a huge a huge advantage is if you discuss budget first it gives you a very good indication as to where the client's headset is um let me ask you a little bit about that. So you said in there, if if it, the client requires you to price out the entire project before you can move forward, that's not a client that's you know ready to do a, whatever whatever it was. Okay. So, but my question is is does that mean that? Simply at your level of expertise and your level of experience that you are dealing with a clientele that for the most part 
has had a professional interior designer before even and not necessarily in the negative aspect but they had another home and a vacation home and they get it or because I have I have worked with interior designers that they have said I've got to present at a complete budget give me the idea of what you know these 30 draperies are going to cost so that I can get together a full budget for that person so where's the in between what what was is a client themselves have to have a level of experience that is commensurate with your level of experience for the most part in order before I, I, they're a fit for you I the honest truth is Someone in the household is designating a budget. The husband is not walking into this project with an open-ended budget. He has an idea of how much he wants to spend. There's absolutely no way this woman has come to you without having a conversation with her husband as to what his expectations are. If she is coming to you directly and has not dealt with her husband, then the chances are she is prematurely hiring an interior designer and that this is, you know, it's a little bit more investigative. Okay. So I love this distinction because the fact is, is what you're describing is it's not if the budget is realistic or not, it's what they have in their mind that they think it is. And that's very Correct. different, right? So because Correct. you might be looking at a whole first floor, living room, dining room, kitchen, family room, powder bath, foyer. And you, for your design level, I'm, I'm just going to use round numbers, say it's 100 grand in your mind. If she looks mm-hmm. at you and says, uh, $30,000, you know, they're both out of their minds and it's not going to happen. But if she looks at you and says, Oh, I don't know, price it all out for me. That tells you that she's fishing and that she hasn't had the hard conversation with her husband, which is what are we going to allot for this project? So the internet has every price you can imagine. There is no one who lit- who is walking into a project that hasn't gone online and looked at nothing, if nothing less than restoration hardware. Right. <laughs> so you're pulling up a sofa, you're pulling up a chair, you're pulling up whatever. If it's CB2, it's what design within reach. There's There's a million sites that you can go on and there's absolutely no reason why you would have no idea of budget. Now that's retail budget. That's not custom interiors. So, of course, there is a huge distinction between the two. But they would have an idea of what it would take within their style, their aesthetic, based on retail experience, what they could possibly spend in a room. Uh, The husband makes X number of dollars. He says, okay, this year I have set aside X number of dollars. This is what you have to spend. There's never an unlimited amount of money, regardless of the client's um, budget. Right, uh, right, you know, right. Right. Uh, income, 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 right, 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 right. I love it. And you know what it is? Because this is so putting the onus on them to be grown ups. Absolutely. You know, I love it. It's so clear. You're and- hiring a professional. You're not walking into Bloomingdale's and, you know, and asking about pricing. You're walking into a professional firm. You're asking professionals to spend the time of developing floor plans, suggesting very unique and very customized interiors. Okay. So at that point, they really should have a commitment. They should really be ready to make a commitment. So walk me through a scenario where you do have, and and Laura, and I want you to humor us because I see that it comes easy for you, whether you you popped out like this or you've learned it (laughs) over, you know, time. But I can see that you have this ability to just look at somebody and say, that's absurd, basically, in a nice way. Don't be an idiot. You know exactly at least what this could cost and stop telling me you don't. Okay, I had, I hear it, right? Um, but t- walk us through for somebody who might be listening right now and thinking, you know, I'm dealing with this exact thing where they're insisting that they have no idea what it will cost and they are absolutely insisting that I gather quotes from all of my trades. I have my staff run down possibilities for sofas and everything else to throw a number. So walk me through when maybe not today when you do it, but three or four or five years ago where you knew in your heart that it was somebody who just hadn't taken the time to 
have the conversation with their partner and be real with themselves and you needed to push them back? How did, how did you describe it? How did you say so, it? Well, I, first of all, I'm, I'm always, I'm starting with asking about the budget. And once I get to that question and they tell me that they have not given it any thought and put the onus on me, I throw it right back to them and say, you need to have a conversation with your husband. He has a number in his mind. There's absolutely no way you can start this project without having that number. Ask him. He'll tell you. Okay. And it's it's truly, it's as simple as that. They all have it. Right. <laughs> we do. They, we all they, do. Yeah. They all have it. Mm-hmm. And even if, and if the husband, I've off, I've frequently had the, the wife come in and she has the number. Right. It's not that they don't have the number. They don't want to share the number. They're skeptical about sharing that number. And they're skeptical about sharing that number because they're concerned that if they say their project is, that their budget is 200, that you are going to say, oh, if it's 200, then it's 300. Right. So they're trying to come up with a way that they're not committed to a figure. Um, In my contract, I also do make a, a, a commitment that they have to commit to a budget and that they are responsible to to meet that budget. Then, and if they do not meet that budget, then they are responsible for design fees that fit that budget. So they can't just arbitrarily come up with a number and not fulfill that commitment. It is they are contractually obligated. Okay, let's not forget that point. But I want to go back to something else. So when they, I agree with you. So many people don't want to anchor the price. They don't want to anchor the budget, and so therefore you're just going to, like you said, forget meet it but exceed it and figure there's some wiggle room, right? So when you understand, when you say to somebody, okay, you, I know that as a couple or your husband, whatever, has a number, go back and find it out. If the, if they are still sitting there and they're like, well. We have discussed it, but I think you should tell me what you think this room or this project will cost. Then what do you do? Well, uh, again, (laughs) I'm I'm very intuitive, and I do get a sense of what people want to spend. There is a tremendous amount, if you're listening carefully, there's a tremendous amount that people disclose. Mm. Generally speaking, it means that if they're really not willing to commit to a number that the number is low okay that they've for whatever the case may be the um, project that you know maybe they're going through a renovation and the renovation costs have gotten out of control um, but they need furniture um, and they you know they 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 want your guidance they want the layout um, they've priced they've tried to do it themselves and then I throw a number out and I'll say, okay, so I, I hear you. I hear you don't want to commit to a figure. But to start this project, to get the bare bones into these rooms so that you can live, and I throw out a number. Right. You know, and it, you know, give or take, you know, it's, you know, is it $50,000? Is it $100,000? Depending on how many rooms they're looking to um to furnish yeah. right um and then of course there's the conversation of the level of furnishing and and of course you know that's a it's a hard number because if they're if we're really lowballing the project then they have to have an own understanding of what the ultimate results are going to be as well and and that is managing your client's expectations um and fulfilling you know the, your you really be taking responsibility as well so that they understand what they're going to get for this number. Generally speaking, what's going to happen is you're going to buy the bare bones. So you're going to get that sectional or your sofa, a chair, a coffee table. You're not getting the accessories. You're not getting the lighting. You're not necessarily getting the beautiful handmade rug, but maybe you're getting a little broad loom. You know, so there's so much that they will have to compromise on. And then the conversation is, are you willing to compromise or are you willing to wait? And I'm always hoping that the client is willing to wait because as the project develops, if they're buying properly and they're saving their money, if they're really holding back and they're being cautious and maybe they're testing the waters, maybe mm. they're testing you. Um, and that that's a great client. 
um, I love when a client holds back and says, okay, prove, prove me, mm. prove to me, you're going to make something beautiful out of, out of a small budget. You know, even if I love the challenge, right. so I'll take that challenge and, but only if that client really wants to wait, if the client wants to fill it with junk, then my suggestion is usually that she that she take that business someplace else. Right, right. Just go into the retail store and let the salesperson help absolutely. you. Absolutely. Right, absolutely. Right, right, or, right. you know, go online and, you know, everyone can do it. You know, you can fill your house with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. You're right. You can just fill your house with stuff or you can design it to look beautiful. There's two, it's two different things for right. real. And, and honestly, just filling it with stuff, you know, with, with things that you purchase online or, or whatever, um, is, is still costly. You're right. still spending a <laughs> tremendous amount of money. Oftentimes, and I, I think one of the things that people don't understand about hiring an interior designer is that often if you hire the right interior designer, you're number one, you're not making any mistakes. So you're saving money right from the very beginning. When they're hiring me, I'm also, I'm purchasing things at wholesale pricing and and passing on that savings to the client and then of course adding a design fee so it can be very price effective um if you're if we're careful and we're making very select decisions with with the with the big picture in mind um, and always thinking, gee, I'm going to spend a little bit more on something. What is that something? Um, maybe it's the rug, maybe it's lighting, um, but there should be, there should be all levels of price point so that there's a balanced design um, and it's not necessarily breaking the bank, but every once in a while you're pushing your husband or you're pushing your partner and saying, this is going to make the room special. Right, right. Okay, okay. So now you said something in there about in your contract, they are responsible for meeting the budget that you have established. And if they don't spend, it sounded like to me the unsaid was if they don't spend that amount in product, because you said then they're going to make it up in design fees. Tell me what that means right there. Well, so I don't take a project that doesn't establish a budget. Um, it's 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 just too precarious. There's there's too many um, there's too many unsaid things if the budget isn't established. So, I we we set a budget and the budget is written into the contract and it it clearly states for he, these rooms we have set the budget to be no less than X number of dollars. Should that budget not be met, then the design fee for the set budget is due upon completion of the project. And the completion of the project is when they stop ordering. Um, and there's usually a time frame to the project as well. Okay, so I got lost there. So in other words, you have a design fee that's set and established, and then there's a budget that's set and established. And I thought where you were going was, say somebody sets and establishes a $100,000 project, budget and then um the last you know twenty thousand dollars one of the partners is giving pushback and maybe something happened and their water heater broke and now somebody doesn't want to spend the last fifteen thousand dollars and they're not going to meet the hundred thousand dollar budget i understood that you your contract was that's great you don't have to buy fifteen thousand dollars more a project but i still get that check as a design fee Yes, that 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 is in black and white. Absolutely, what my contract says. Whoa. Now, whether or not, if the water heater breaks and they don't have that money, that I'm that insensitive, right, to the fact right. that they cannot at this time spend that last fifteen thousand, I would have to be pretty cold hearted, and I I'm not that person. Um, I I you know there's there's too many. There's, there's great clients, um, and I think as you work with clients, you develop a relationship and a rapport, and certainly an insensitivity to that scenario would be horrible. Right. Um, and I would not want to be that person. But that's what the contract means. That's what the contract okay. means. And, and so and, if they and, arbitrarily it, just want to change the agreement and it isn't based on a hardship or a legitimate need, it, it and I, I guess what you're saying yeah. is yeah. it just sets up, don't 
sit here in my office on May 1st and say, we're going to spend a hundred grand. And then I get running around in circles and I source all this stuff. And then you wake up July 1st and say, this is looking like it's actually going to cost a hundred grand. That's no good. Right. What, what it's say what it's really trying to do is to establish the ground rules. The ground rules are we, in order for us to work together, we needed to establish a budget. You needed to commit to that budget. You cannot walk in on June 1st, say the budget is 100,000, and on July 1st say that, you know what, I, I think I'm, I, I have 25,000 and I'm, I'm just not real willing to commit to a dollar more at this time, but I'm going to pick up the project again sometime in the future. That was deceptive. And, um, and under the circumstances, the amount of work that had gotten us to the point of designing $100,000 worth of merchandise took us longer um, than the, the value of a $25,000 commitment. Right, 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 right. I love it. So it just really just establishes accountability. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I noticed that you said no less than. Do you actually include wording that says or more than or do you? Yes. Like, okay. And do you give it a range or do you say no less than 100 and no more than 100? How do you handle the no. over budget? No, no. Any, anything over budget is, you know, that's, that's, that's bonus. That's you know, on that's, approval. In other words. Absolutely. Okay. Right. So there's, in other there's words, there's no you... limitation to, to exceeding the budget. I, I can't imagine a scenario where it wouldn't work um, in my favor. No, no, no. In your favor, for sure. But in other words, if I'm the consumer and I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, this is all high and mighty for you. But what about me? I want to make sure that you don't consistently provide me with design that is going to push me over this okay. budget. So I, 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 I do get I do get that questioned. Um, and of course, what uh, the questions that come from a contract like that is, well, what if I don't want to spend the amount that you are pro you are proposing. So let's say I'm proposing a fifteen thousand dollars sectional, and in your mind you wanted to spend six thousand dollars on a sectional. Mm -hmm. um, it is it is part of the pre preliminary conversation that we are talking about price limitations. Um, you know, sort of budgetary guidelines. Um, I, I just had a conversation with a builder. I'm I'm developing a, a townhouse project. And I said, look, we're meeting with the electrician, but you haven't reviewed the lighting plan. Um, we have a lighting schedule for you to review. And he said, whatever you've selected. And I wrote back and I said, well, whatever I've selected, it leaves me a little uncomfortable because we haven't established budgetary guidelines. Mm -hmm. So so I picked out lighting, outdoor lighting for $250 a light, which seemed very reasonable to me. <laughs> and he said, oh, gee, you know, these are rentals. I was thinking more like one. I said, one. OK, well, let me go back. Now I've come back and I'm at 180, which is, you know, less than my 250. And I think that it's a it's a compromise. Um, and I'm sure he'll view it as a compromise. But you know, you have to have budgetary guidelines. Um, right. You know, some people say, I want art. Well, art is... That's you know, a jackpot question, so, right? That's right. crazy. Right. You know, are we talking coffee table art? Are we talking collectible art? Are we talking posters? You know, what are we talking about? Um, so I would never begin looking for art without budgetary guidelines. Right, right. And that is that is a hot potato topic because honestly, it could be 500 for a piece or 5 50,000 for a piece. So you have no idea. And, and honestly, I don't I don't spend too much of my time anymore on that. That's something I I hire a art consultant and I allow the client to work with me and the art consultant and I'm guiding the art consultant in the direction that I want the art to go in. But I feel that um, art is a huge responsibility when it comes to particularly the investment portion of, of artwork, you know, the, the purchasing something that the expectation is that there is going to be investment there. Right, right. When we um, purchase a sofa, we know it's getting less and less valuable every day of the week that we own it. But when we purchase correct. art, sometimes there's an expectation that it's going to become more valuable. And if we haven't been properly advised, that could be a little crazy. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. I love it. Okay. Okay. So, so the thing is that 
take us to, if you can, Laura, take us to a designer listening that maybe is going to 100000 in revenue this year, oh, gross sales, okay? And remember that type of that that period of business and that level of expertise and that level of um capacity you know uh, capacity isn't the right word i want um you know well, there's a word it'll come to me but um ability is the word i want um how because that conversation about budget is exactly the same, but now we might be talking about my budget is ten thousand dollars for this room instead of one hundred thousand dollars for this room. Right. So the but the con- I know that the conversation is the same, but the the sophistication of that potential client is also different. So are there le- different ways to have the conversation that you could suggest, or do you just suggest having it in the exact same way? I know that somewhere in between you and your checkbook, and it's with your, if it's your husband, or your spouse, there is a number in your head. So spill it, lady. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. There aren't too many ways of. of- of, of of phrasing this that is going to get the end result that you need you need you need a firm commitment um, and there you know there's probably you know I'm a I'm a hardcore New Yorker so I'm very direct um, I'm sure there are other people in other ways of of phrasing things that it might sound a little less direct mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, the bottom line is um, you want the client, to have an understanding of what things cost and you want an understanding of what the guideline is and and you it it it's just a it's a tremendous time saving advantage right um, otherwise you're you're really you're spinning wheels what i love that you had said earlier was that this client is coming in to hire a professional And if they don't have that base level understanding of that and show the respect that that's exactly what they're embarking to do, then they are shortchanging the process, not you. And and the thing is, what's interesting is, and I I just also want to say, I agree with you. I think that whether the conversation is over 5,000 or 50,000 or 500,000, you have to just be willing to be direct. And you, depending, look, we're here in New York, New Jersey, we're direct right straight by the eyeballs, right? But if, you know, if you're from Iowa and it's, you have to say it a little softer, that's okay. But right. but be direct for the level of your culture of your area. Like well, I, I think it also it says something about your professionalism as well. Right, um, that's I what think I'm that like wanting to. You really want to out. establish. Like right, you really want to establish that you are working with a professional, and as such, you need to respect that I am going to spend time on this project. And in order for me to spend time on this project, I need to have an understanding of how much time I should be spending on this project. Right. And the budget is there to establish the timeline. Right, right, right. I love it. I think it's just so clear. And the other thing that I was going to say about it is, is that often in in the interior design industry, we forget that it is, and this is not everybody, but that right. level of professionalism is often sideline because of our behavior in the way we handle it not Absolutely. right exactly Absolutely. so Absolutely. you set the table you set the the parameters for it and in 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 my mind it's like if you were to walk into a car dealership and you say to a person i'd love to have a brand new car and if he looked, if he, you know, if he looked at you and said, "What's the budget?" You'd never say, "I don't know. Just show me everything." Right. You know what course. I mean? You'd you'd right. say, "Well, of course, I want to spend twenty grand on a right. car." You know, I, like I, I had a I had a client who was recommended um, by another designer. Um, she was based out in the Hamptons, and and she recommended me because I was Westchester based, and he was moving from the Hamptons to Westchester, and he contacted me, and the budget that he gave to this other designer was significantly less um, than the expectation of what I would need to work with. But he he was so accustomed to working with the, this, this designer who really set no no parameters. Mm. So when I was so firm with the budget, he said, well, I really don't know. And I said, but you 
do know. You just <laughs> bought a house for X number of dollars. You don't have an unlimited amount of money to spend. What's the amount of money that you want to spend? Not what you need to spend. What's the amount of money that you want to spend? And sometimes that may be the, the alternate approach um, because the bottom line is there is a number. Right. I love that. Even that little twist. Well, what do you want to spend? Because right. that at least sets the conversation in a place where you can have some intelligent conversation. Because right. if he just bought a $3 million home in Westchester and he wants to spend $25,000, you know you're done talking. Right. <laughs> it's exactly. like, okay, that's great. You want to spend $25,000. Here's right. you know the number for Ikea. Have Correct. a great exactly. life, right? Right, exactly. but but if he if, but if he were to say, well, I want to spend sixty thousand dollars, you might know it's a hundred. But I would guess and correct me at that point, you're willing to pursue the conversation to see if he's saying sixty, but he really has eighty five because correct. of that whole anchoring. Correct. Right? And and the bottom line was we we danced for quite some time. He absolutely refused to give me a dollar commitment because he did not want to be committed to a, a, a particular set fee. And I said, look, you're not, you're not ready for me. I love the takeaway. I love the takeaway, Laura. Good for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's the ultimate. It's like, okay, well, we can't do business together. Not right now anyway, because you're not ready. You're not right. serious. And, you know. and he wasn't serious. You know, it's, it, you have to, I, I think the problem with the, with the designer who has that hundred thousand dollar business is they're afraid to turn business away. Of course. What they're not thinking about is how much time this client who's not ready to pursue this, the project seriously is going to take away from other projects that may be far more profitable. Right. I love that. That's such a great thing to add to this whole discussion because <laughs> – when he, it, as you said, when he is not serious, has not thought about it, and the thing is, what I'm hearing is there are sometimes the situation is they're afraid to say, but when right. he finally ultimately recognizes that you're not going to engage, you are not having the consultation, you are not going down this road without this number said out loud, and he's willing to walk away then – it's the proof in the pudding that he wasn't ready. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Yes. I love it. I love it. And the thing is, there's some people, look, you, you know, we, we are where we are, New York, New Jersey, we have our Wall Streeters, we have all of this stuff. And a lot of them, the negotiation is sport. I mean, I'm one of those people. Right. I love negotiation. <laughs> I will do it for sport. My poor husband, you know, wh what restaurant are we going to? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, let's figure it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But there are those types that it really, they are so accustomed to the high level deals and the moving and the shaking that they just are going to take one look and say, oh, I'm going to maneuver this conversation. I'm going to, you Absolutely. know, and as soon as you are willing to close it down and walk away, then you find out if they're serious or not. Because I've had the same thing here. And like I, I keep referencing, we're very close to each other. And I think sometimes I'm going to just say it. I think sometimes men are surprised when women will do it. And th that is my favorite time to do it, I have to say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, well, then you know what? We don't have to do this. I understand your objectives are different and I'm probably not the company for you. And if they let you go, they let you go and that's good but if they oh well wait a minute blah 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 oh okay so we're going to start this over again on right, my footing right. part, loving part of the part of the dancing was that he said well you know maybe instead of giving you a dollar commitment you can just do floor plans for me <laughs> um and i said you know honestly i'm really sorry but i'm not a floor planner that's that's not my business i mean i can i you know, what am I going to charge you? I'm going to charge you an hourly fee and give you a floor plan. That's just not my business. It's not, I don't, I have no desire right. to be involved in that. And, and then ultimately, ultimately to take ownership for what you've purchased from my floor plan. Right, right. You know, you have to be careful. Right. And the, the reality of that situation is, is that's where you are now in business, where there's no payout for you to sit there with, 
three people on staff and putts around with floor plans for an hourly rate when those six, eight hours could be sent, spent on a project that is the $100,000 project, right? right? But let's be serious, right? I mean, you check me, see if you agree. If I really am at the beginning of my career and I am looking to establish relationships and build clientele, if and as long as I actually value my time properly, I would think that I could look at a new designer and say, okay, so you know what? Then give them a price for floor plans, but make sure it's actually what it's going to take you and put money in your pocket after you're done to do it and walk right. away, well, right? Right. I think one of the things that um, uh, someone who has a $100,000 business has to do, they have to take some risk. Right. Um, you have to you have to find that project where you think, oh, you know, I really think this is a great project, but I don't I don't see the budget. But boy, I think if I did one room right. and they saw that I did a great job, that that would parlay. And and it does happen. It happens quite frequently. Yeah. So rather than taking a whole house, if someone isn't prepared to give you a whole house budget, just take that one room. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And right. We all start somewhere. You start somewhere and and say, okay, so try me. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I can see your hesitation. I'm new. I'm young. I'm this. I'm that. I'm inexperienced. Whatever the situation is, um, let me do one room. And maybe do it at a price that is very competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, really put yourself out there and say, look, I'm going to – you take a risk on me. I'm going to take a risk on you. Right. I think this will pay off in the end. After this – after we finish this room, then we're going to renegotiate. And But I know I'm going to make you very happy. And I did that. I love it. I'm, and I, I still – you know, with the builders and the developers, I'm still – I'm still – I'm still, you know, still – putting it out there for far less than it, than the project would have would have parlayed should I take a full uh, percentage fee. Right, um, right, but right. I know in the long term when they have multiple buildings and multiple projects and that it's 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 going to change my business. Right. And I love two things that you said in there. Number one is and I, I agree with this wholeheartedly when you do something because you see the potential in what it could do after effects for your business. And if you decide to do it at whatever the conditions are, it's going to be a lesser rate or whatever it is, is to still be very clear on what that is. In other words, it's your decision. You're not right. coerced into doing it at a lesser rate and you are taking it on and feeling like, all right, all right. It's you make a very, because my thing is, is be very clear on what you will or you won't do. Because if I had to say, let's say I'm a new designer and I say that one room is $5,000 design fee, I'm totally making stuff up, right? Um, if somebody wants me to do it, for 3500 and I see the potential of the next project exactly as you described it. I'm only going to do that. First of all, I'm going to try and come back and say, well, how about 4200 And then he's going to say 3700 <laughs> Okay, first of all, I'm going to do that just for fun, okay? But <laughs> um, but my, my ultimate point is I will never say yes to a number lower than I can happily do the project for. Because if you get up every day and resent doing the project because you know it, you are not getting your minimum value of what you are, it does not serve you. Right. right. Do you agree Absolutely. with that? Okay. Absolutely. I love it. And then the second thing that you said in there that I love is to not be afraid. If you offer and you agree to and you come up with a fair compromise of your rates for the potential of the next project, I love, Laura, that you said, and in the beginning when this is being contracted, when we do the next room, it's not going to be at this rate. Right, of course. Right. See, see, because what happens is many designers, and, and forget designers, many professions feel like, well, once I gave it to you at 20%, 30% off what I normally charge, then, then, then you are going to think that every single room I do for you is at 20 30 40% off, okay? And, and the fact is that is what the consumer is going to think. Of but course. not if you establish from the beginning, I'm right. giving you a gimme. I'm giving you a gimme. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to make my markup on this. I'm not going to make my livelihood on this one. But this is for the potential of what's coming. And when it comes, you will now know that I can deliver. You will now know that my process is worthwhile. You will now know that my design is worthwhile. And you will then go into my regular rates. 
Right. And, and also keep in mind that each client is a potential of, you know, five to seven referrals. Right. 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 Absolutely. And that, that's your business. Your referral business is 100% your business. Right. I love it. I love it. It's so clear. And um, I, you know, this is just my love language directness. <laughs> <laughs> it just is. I just, I, I mean, because you know what it is, Laura, I know that you know it. I, I know that you do. Because what it is, is when you're so clear, of what your line in the sand is, it's there's no drama about it. Right, absolutely. Right, it just, this is what it is. It's like, your eyes are blue, lady, your eyes are blue. That's it, we're not debating it. We're not debating right. that this is my fee, this is my fee. You don't have to pay it. You can go down the, to the next designer, but this is my fee and I'm not you know worried about whether you like it or you don't like it. Right. Right, okay, I love it. You do have to be confident, you do have to know your value, right? Yes, you, you do. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you're taken advantage of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it is, it's, it, it's, such, it's such an industry that just rampantly takes advantage of the design professional. Well, we make it seem so easy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, effort, it's done effortlessly. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's perceived as something that is, you know, it's just something that's easy. Mm -hmm. I could do that. I, you know, I oftentimes I get a client who will, who will come to me with the beautiful, this beautiful chair. I just absolutely love that beautiful chair. And I'll say, yes, it's, it is a absolutely beautiful chair. However, it doesn't fit in the room. It doesn't fit with the other pieces that are going into the room. And so, yes, it's very easy to identify individual pieces, but put a whole room together and have it be totally, you know, uh, well designed. Right, right, right. The scale That's is it the, right and you don't exactly. understand it. It's right. not the individual pieces. It's the whole room. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it's the whole house. Right, 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 right. Well, I mean, and I have said it a, a dozen times on the podcast is that, the Achilles heel of many interiors, interior designers is truly not getting that while it seems easy for you that coordinating pattern and texture and uh, and even if you're not cl classically trained, you have a sense of scale and balance and proportion is underestimating that that is not the same for the average consumer. And because right. it is, like you said, it, because it is easy for you to do somewhat, okay, that you forget that that's the value in paying for it. You think it's easy for everybody. It's just not. Right. It's just not. And it's funny because there are other professions that I guess what it is is because, what I mean, there are other professions that no one would ever – want to pay somebody less money because, well, this is easy for you, right? right. Like we, we right. recognize that whatever is easy is easy because of, I mean, even if somebody is not a trained interior designer from the standpoint of college and all that stuff, not everyone that I've met that has not been a trained interior designer has either come to it from another corollary field like yourself. And I don't know if you also did design school or not, but come from fashion or come from something like that. And also too, they have almost always to a one spent their entire life from the time they were were a little child reading the magazines looking right. at the furniture and you see right. you forget that that's been your education all these years because you enjoyed it but you were taking it in year right. after year right. and right. all right. those magazines when you were in high school and you were in college and even if you were in college for marketing you know if what you read was dwell and ad you were Really I have a room studying. Of, I have a room of those magazines right. still to this day I really should just throw them out they're I just know. They've consumed, but it's um, it was definitely you know prior prior to the internet. Right, right. I mean, and that's just it. It's just you, you, you because it was enjoyment. You, it's so easy to forget that that actually was education. Right. You know, it was it was it's in its own way an education, and and so it always takes somebody that shows you what you do is is not easy for them to do for you to go oh. 
okay, you don't know how to do that. No, I actually don't, sweetie. I have no idea what size <laughs> soap should be here. Would you please come tell me? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, so really interesting, Laura. I have to say, I've, I, I love this conversation. I have had many right. requests from uh, listeners over the years to have a conversation about budget, and it's been attempted many times. I have to say, I think we've done the best job ever of <sighs> having a good conversation on budget. Thank you so much. Much. Sure. Yeah. This was this was a lot of fun. Thank you. Amazing, right? <laughs> I mean, I told you. And if you were in High Point just this past couple of weeks ago in October 2018, and you happened to come to the Gabby showroom where I was leading a panel discussion with Rachel Cannon and Mrs. Paranjapay, you will remember that together the three of us got into a discussion about budgets. And I said to all of you, coming up was this show with Laura Michaels. And if you wanted more conversation, more straight talk about how to handle this budget question, that to be on the lookout for this show. Well, was I right? Right, 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 right. Okay. Now, what is the key takeaway here? The number one thing, here it is. Laura said it. Everyone has a budget. Everyone. Okay. Think about it. Whether it is entry level design and the client has a thousand dollars or it's high end luxury like Laura and it's $200,000 or $2 million. It doesn't matter. Laura said that she will not take a project without the budget established. Seems bold, right? I mean, maybe it seems bold to you, right? But think about it. How else can you move forward? How can you select a product without the budget? You actually cannot, right? So don't let a project start without setting a budget, even if it's difficult for you to have this conversation. When you do have the conversation, frame it for your client. When you explain it's for their benefit. How can you even begin to source? How can you begin to be honorable of their budget if they won't explain what it is? All right. When you do it that way, there's no arguing with it, right? I mean, exactly. Okay. Now, send some love to our sponsors, Article.com and My Doma Studio. Article has a trade program with amazing delivery and return process that makes sourcing from them practically foolproof. I'm just saying. Visit welldesigned.article.com today. And My Doma Studio, you know, is the best platform out there to help you track your time, your projects, and your vendors to help you be more efficient and more profitable. Go to My Doma Studio dot com slash a well-designed business. Thank you so much for the recent new iTunes reviews. I love them. I love, love, love learning what it is that you love about the show. I also want to say thank you for the comments that you share with me every single week on Instagram. And also I want to say, did you happen to see my stories last week on Instagram? The one where I ask you to tell me about you and your business and your inspirations and your design heroes. So if you miss that, first of all, my Instagram is Luann Nigara. Okay. Then go over to my highlights and look for the tell me about you. All right. And let me know what you think because Luann wants to know. All right. All right. So thank you so much for listening today. I would love to know if you handled your next budget conversation differently because of today's show. Why don't you decide to handle it differently? Decide to be the pro that you are and lead the process with your client. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one -on -one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.